The apostle says in Ephesians chapter number two, for by grace are you saved through faith and it not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Once we do something, it makes our flesh feel better. And usually in a religious context, when you do something, you feel better, you feel more holy, and you feel more righteous because you've done something. The issue in the New Testament is not what you can do, but what he's done for you. There is a spiritual world, folks, whether you admit it or not. There is a spiritual dimension that you need to understand is more real than that body that you're sitting in right now. What's hungering for God is your spirit. What's hungering for God is your soul. What is empty today is your spirit. What is empty today is your soul. That part of you that needs a touch from God is that inner man, the real man, the living man, not that body that you're in. Have you ever stopped for a moment? and looked at that crucifixion and asked yourself a simple question. Why did he die at Calvary? Why did an innocent man, a sinless man, a perfect man, a holy man, why did he die at Calvary? If you can answer that question truthfully, if you can get a concept of what the crucifixion is about, then you're a step closer to God. His name is above every name. I hear these people all the time. I spent some time this week reading where they say the name of Jesus is not the right name. We should call him Yeshua. And all of this into Hebrew and into Latin and into this and that and so forth and so on. Let me tell you something. You can be tied up with a name and never know the man. It's not about a name. It's about the man. Christ Jesus. You can spend all your life crossing T's, dotting I's, splitting hairs, and never meet the Christ that died at Calvary. Folks, I'm lifting Jesus, because I speak English, and Jesus is the English name of Yeshua. Amen. But he can also be lifted up in beauty. Why? Because the apostle said time and again that you might be filled with the knowledge of God, that you might understand God, that you might know him and the power of his resurrection. There is a spiritual knowledge that can only come from God. He must give it to you. It comes by revelation. You can read until you're blue in the face and your eyeballs pop out of your head. But as long as you read it intellectually with a mind, the Holy Spirit of God will always talk about Christ. He will lift him up. He said when he, the Spirit of truth, has come, he will not speak of himself. This is why I fall out with the Pentecostals and Charismatics. For all they do is go around singing and praising the Holy Ghost. There's nothing wrong with the Holy Spirit. Praise God. But it is not our place to praise the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will praise Jesus. If it's the real Holy Ghost, His purpose in this world is to exalt the Son of God. Let me tell you one of the reasons why. Because when you get into the Spirit world, we don't even half understand the Holy Spirit. None of us know the essence of the Spirit. We're getting into a realm that is so obscure that we don't fully comprehend what we're dealing with. But we know Jesus. We know who He is. We know why He came, why He died. He was buried and He rose again the third day. We understand that. My friend, as He becomes alive in my soul, more beautiful to me every day, I exalt and lift up the Savior. That's the Holy Ghost working in your heart. I want you to notice what it says in Colossians chapter number 2 and verse number 9. The Bible said, For in Him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. The Greek word translated fullness there is pleroma. The Apostle Paul is confronting the Gnostics and the Judaizers. He's confronting those who said they had so much more knowledge than we do. They're so much smarter than us, so much more spiritual than we are. The Apostle Paul butted heads with them. He butted heads with them. He said, let me tell you who Jesus Christ is. When he used the word play Roma here, he's not talking about fullness in the sense that you fill up a, a, fill up a glass full of water. You look at that glass and it's full of water. That's not what he's talking about. What's he talking about, preacher? He was saying in the body, 2,000 years ago, this man who walked among you, this man is the God-man. And in him dwells the absolute completion of God, the manifestation of God, the incarnation of God. You need joy, it's Christ. You need holiness, it's Christ. Are you hungry, it's Christ. Do you need forgiveness, it's Christ. 